Justice. And now for a view from the Hill. For that, please welcome Congressman Ryan Costello. He's a Republican from Pennsylvania. Congressman Costello sits on the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which is confronting all the big tech issues. Uh, back to lead the conversation is Kathleen Koch. Good morning, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I know you haven't been here for the entire discussion this morning, but we've really had quite a lot on the table, everything from data privacy, we've been talking about cyber, AI, uh, you know, foreign interference um, online. If, what would you say it is that keeps you up at night is it when it comes to technology and policy? Is it one of those or something else? Well, I think that more than anything else, it's my concern that the issues are so sophisticated and are so fast moving, the velocity of them, that uh, it's very easy to take the, take the simple way out and say, oh, it's uh, content bias. If we attack that, we have solved the problem. Because I think it's much deeper, I think this month's edition of The Atlantic really speaks to it, and that is it's really driving a wedge in our political culture, and it's multifaceted, and it's not any, it doesn't lend itself to an easy answer, and so the complexity of it in a period of time where there's such a short attention span, both in our body politic, as well as the other number of issues that our legislative body has to deal with. I don't want to say it's insurmountable, but what keeps me up at night, if anything keeps me up at night besides my children, <laughs> is the fact that it's really, really deep and very difficult. Do your colleagues get that? Do they understand how, how tough this is going to be? Well, I think that the politically correct answer is yes. <clears throat> Uh, but I also think that the blunt answer is uh, if we are not empowering our regulatory agencies to be somewhat prescriptive uh, and out, out in front of this, um, then we're not going to get it right. Because this is not, and we'll, I know we're going to have a, a more in-depth discussion on this, this is not a set of issues that if Congress gets really smart really quickly, Congress can solve them, right? I mean, it's beyond any legislative body because it's so fast moving, because it involves so many different parts. Let's just go through some of the issues. Uh, for instance, let's talk about <clears throat> Facebook. They had the hack um, last week. How concerned are you about that, in particular when you're looking at um, a company, an organization as large as Facebook with the assets that it has, that it cannot even protect uh, its users' privacy? I don't think that we as Americans uh, should expect any company is going to have a bulletproof cyber, you know, uh, not that is, I don't believe that anything <clears throat> is impenetrable. And I think to suggest that it could become that is a fallacy. I, I, I read an article on Facebook over the weekend in, in a, in a, I think it was the New Yorker, sorry to say that, the Atlantic event, but it was, it was relative to, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg's sort of philosophy, you know, get big, scale it, you know, some of these other problems that arise throughout the course of growth are just things that we will have to deal with. And, and I think that that's sort of been the mantra of tech, which is now big tech. And uh, it's understandable, but, you know, we also have to uh, be wary of the fact that, or be mindful of the fact that every single day, hundreds, if not thousands of attempts uh, in terms of cyber warfare against our own uh, intelligence systems happen. That's just the nature of the world that we live in. So it doesn't, it, it, I'm not surprised by it at all. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of talk today here about the need for potentially um, national data privacy legislation. I know you've participated in several of the committee hearings um, on the Hill with the, some of the tech giants. What are your thoughts about the need for that? They seem to be now calling for it, well, they, whereas they were fighting it in the past. Sure. And what do you think it should include? Would you model it after GDPR, after what California's doing? Well, I, I do think that it's needed. I think Senator Thune has come out uh, with a set of priorities. I have something here, uh, the New America Foundation, which leans a little left, did a very, very uh, exhaustive uh, analysis on the, the principles that, sh that should be laid out uh, in a regulatory framework. I think th that somewhere between GDPR and California is where we end up. I think GDPR is probably too far reaching. I think it's actually good that it was implemented, not because it's the fully right 
uh, regulatory landscape, but because we can learn from it and we can dial back what needs to be dialed back. It's very clear to me, though, that you're going to need preemption. So we can't have states um, it, it enact their own laws and assume that attorney generals across the country. Excuse me. Um, losing your mind. Yeah, yeah, I am losing. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, are, are going to be able to, to grapple with this. So, and the other thing that I would say that I think would be very, very helpful is if we take from these priorities and actually lay out what the legislation looks like so we can compete on that. I've seen, uh, I mean, uh, driverless car technology is a good example where most everyone agreed and yet it took forever to, not forever, it took a while to get out of the House. Now we have some things in the Senate still to wrestle out. So this, it's so complicated that the quicker we get to actual text, I think the better off we will be. Um, when we look at time frame though, what do you think as far as start to finish something like that and let's just if we could get um next session of congress if you could get something done in in one session of congress i think that that would be fairly remarkable um signed into law i think that would be a very very big deal and remember something else that we may talk about momentarily is then when you get 5g and what sensors are going to do in iot you know data privacy and what that privacy entails is actually going to probably look different than the kind of data, data privacy we're talking about now. What we're talking about now is I don't want anyone to know where I, what, what I searched for on the internet or any, you know, my consumer behavior. Uh, once you start getting into data privacy in the IoT space with sensors that 5G is really, you're probably going to see even more proliferation, then you don't want people to know like what's going on in your home. Right. It's a whole different world of data privacy. <laughs> Now, is there pressure, though, you said the next Congress, does something have to happen before California's law goes into effect in 2020? Uh, is that the clock that's ticking? What I think is ticking is an opportunity for a lot of big tech who's now com has to comply with GDPR for us to do something less than that, but which is yet substantial so that, that we know the rules of the game. I actually think that a lot of um, uh, vertical companies off of big tech who are going to be engaged in tech are going to need to understand the rules of the game so that their products um, and even those that are, you know, manufacturing the microchips, et cetera, et cetera, so that everyone, uh, we don't have legacy technology and legacy products that aren't able to comply with whatever privacy legislation ultimately becomes enacted. That's, that's, I think that this is a unique instance where we need to lay out the rules of the game so that we can have more innovation. Whereas in the past it was let's not, let's not muddy the waters with the regulatory landscape that innovation is just going to outpace in a year or right. two. I so, think you, so you don't think this would think impact, opposite. it wouldn't impact innovation? No, I actually or think ability it would be a compete. good thing for it. Okay. Um, you were talking about a little bit about Internet of Things there for a moment, and I, that kind of takes us, I mean, it's privacy, but it's also security. How concerned are you about that, that, oh, you know, our companies today designing with privacy in mind from the start enough? Well, on the cybersecurity side, I'm extremely concerned, and I wish I had an answer for it. I mean, it, it is well beyond any member of Congress. I mean, we're, we're talking about the actual software engineers that build these defense systems into uh, products and into the technology itself. I, I simply don't have a good answer for that. And that's where I think, um, you know, the, 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 the regulatory agencies have a say, but this is where uh, the industry is going to sink or swim on its own. Nobody cares more about the cybersecurity than the industry itself. Let's go back a little bit to uh, some of the, the, the big tech companies. Are you confident that they're doing enough in some of these areas as far as content and keeping tabs on their content better than they have in the past? I mean, we're talking about stopping foreign governments from buying divisive ads or creating fake accounts and, and bots that, that really, um, you know, are trying to sow discord and influence, actually influence U.S. politics. Uh no, I'm not. I think that they've been slow. I think they'll acknowledge that. But I would also say that we're our own worst enemy. And uh, I think there's more trash on social media generated by Americans against 
one politician or another political party than anything that's happening on the outside. So I think, I think we do it to ourselves. We create very negative feedback loops. Uh, the, the incentive structure for our serving in politics right now is sp speaks to the divisions in our country. I mean, you do not get rewarded for compromise. You don't get rewarded for being civil. Uh, the rewards are much more being bombastic, being confrontational, uh, breaking the rules. Uh, so th I would not ascribe that to our foreign enemies seeking to um, perpetuate divisions through social media. It does happen, but I think I think it's on us. And I, I, I think if there's anything that's that's destructive to our political culture that happens through these technology platforms, it's the algorithms which tend to sort us into only information that we like to see. Now that, that goes to a question I was going to ask you about uh, President Trump's concern about things like Google searches. He thinks they're biased. Maybe they need to be regulated. Well, what do you think about that? But, uh, so there, I, I just don't know how you go about regulating that. I mean, something I was reading a little earlier is we would have public interest bodies uh, looking at the social value of algorithms, I, you know, we're starting to really wade into content regulation uh, by our government if we start doing that. Uh, didn't, didn't you ask him in any hearings about that, though, Google algorithms for searches? I did. Uh -huh. Did they give you a satisfactory answer? Or? Well, it wasn't Google. Uh, I think I, s I don't know if that was to Zuckerberg or to Dorsey, <laughs> but I, d I do know that I asked about it. And the other question I asked, something else we're going to get into momentarily, is on the AI side and the machine learning side. Mm -hmm. And speaking of data privacy, um, what, what is a company allowed to extrapolate from you, your image, mm -hmm. uh, in order to build that um, online profile of you, right? Mm -hmm. Do we own our own profile? I mean, it's a very profound question. Our own image, that's yeah. fascinating. Well, let's do talk about um, AI. The former head of Google China, Kai Fu Li, uh, made a recommendation last week that the United States double our spending on research and development of AI. Um, otherwise, he says we're going to be left behind by China. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think he's right. And I also think uh, one of the articles on The Atlantic this month was right on point about the following. We have assumed that liberal democracy, uh, and by liberal democracy, not Democrat democracy or Republican democracy, but just liberal d democracy in the political philo philosophical sense of the word is going to prevail, that we will endure, that we will outlast, that we are right mm -hmm. relative to other forms of government. Um, but in the age of technology and with AI and with machine learning, given the disparate streams of information that um, channel their way across uh, democracy versus a centralized government that can essentially own AI and machine learning, um, AI and machine learning may actually afford that autocratic government um, much more capacity to rule than in the instance of, of a liberal democracy. So I, I do think that there's something to getting out ahead of AI and machine learning, and if we don't, uh, how negative that could be relative to other foreign powers, I think, is something that hasn't fully been explored, but is, also, but is a danger to us. I want to take time for questions. Uh, anyone have one? Raise your hand. Otherwise, we will just forge onward. All right, we'll keep going. On AI, I did want to ask, we don't, the United States doesn't have a formal AI strategy. China does. Europe does. Is that a concern that we don't? I think it is, but I also think that that's where the leaders in private industry should be the ones that lean in and help us with that. And finally, you are one of the more tech-savvy members of Congress. Um, are you, do you think your fellow lawmakers are ready to step up to the plate when it comes to regulating you know, this, this very complicated mix, privacy, security? I think that if members... Uh, keep an open mind and trust the experts on what the regulatory agencies need. I mean, a lot of this is, is enabling legislation so that the FCC, FTC, um, some of the White House, Department of Commerce agencies have the, have the capacity to do what they need to be doing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's more important than anything else. Having said all that, we do need uh, 
privacy legislation and, and whether it's Senator Thune's or something like his that extrapolates from California and GDPR, th that's, that's going to be a necessary moving forward because from an innovation perspective, we're at the point now where, where we do need to have some rules of the game in order to continue to grow and compete globally. Mm -hmm. one, one item that I think you were saying you thought needed to be included, is that the ability to of erasure or correction of your data? Is that something that needs to be part of it? It is. Mm -hmm. What that looks like, uh, I think, uh, the, the right of erasure, mm -hmm. uh, correct. And that's, that's, that's a GDPR as well as uh, data portability. Those issues, um, I've seen them laid out by a, a number of different thought leaders in terms of concepts that need to be addressed in the legislation. Mm -hmm. I think we need more people laying out the legislation so that we can find out who agrees with who. The final point that I would make is we also need to make sure that when we're enacting tech policy, we're not just doing it for big tech because we're at a point now where some legislation actually ends up being a barrier to innovation and it only allow big tech is, are the only folks in town that can actually afford to comply right. with it. All right. Congressman Ryan Costello, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman, and thank you, Kathleen. This conversation this morning in all its complexity was the perfect way to begin the festival. Thank you to Booz Allen for making this possible. Thank you to you, those of you who stuck it out with us. I, I think it's clear that the people that people love the back of the room, which is so lovely, and I totally understand. Um, the main stage of the Harmon, 2 o'clock, Hillary Clinton, be there. Have a wonderful morning.